Hello everyone and welcome to today's module on food traceability using blockchain. I'm Massimo, I'm going to be your host and I'm going to drive you through all the complexity of what a blockchain is and what you can do with it in the food industry. I am a computer scientist, I work as an algorithmic trader, which means that I automate trading strategies on the stock markets full time, but I'm also extremely passionate about blockchain and cryptocurrencies and I'm here today to uh, help you understand how all of this works and I'm joined by Francesco who's our blockchain expert from IBM so I'm going to let him introduce and then you can find much more about us we run a decentralized autonomous organization together using the QR code that you can see here there's going to be a lot more QR codes through the module we're going to keep it fun and engaging so don't forget to pause the video scan the QR codes and you can read a lot more information about what we're talking about Francesco off to you so thanks Massimo. Hello everyone. So as introduced by Massimo, I'm a full-time blockchain developer at IBM uh, and computer science in myself and very passionate about blockchain. So today I'm going to try to give you a very uh, brief overview on what blockchain is and try to explain in, in very simple words. And I guess we can actually start giving a just yep. overview of the course. Uh, go ahead. So first thing I'm going to say, guys, definitely go on Canvas and check out the resources that we put there for you. There's some of the best resources out there. They're not usually free. So you can find all the original papers about Satoshi Nakamoto from Satoshi Nakamoto about Bitcoin. You can find all the original papers on the food industry. You can find all the blog posts and interesting stuff that we got. Um, we dig that for you. Now, in terms of the course, it's going to be split in four modules. We're going to have blockchain basics. Francesco is going to explain exactly how a blockchain works and what the benefits are. And we're going to talk about food chain. So he's going to go through how you can apply the other blockchain uh, to the food industry. We're going to talk about supply chain, labeling, insurance, market agriculture, e-commerce. And he's going to tell you all about who the big players are. We got IBM, Walmart, Alibaba, and the small ones as well. We got plenty of really cool Italian companies that are doing amazing stuff out there. We're going to go through the use cases. So I'm going to drive you through some specific use cases. We're going to talk about how you can track and trace different things across the food supply chain. We're going to talk about tunas, olive oils, milk, pork, and we're going to look at, for example, authenticity of a product. We're going to specifically look at wines. And then lastly, I'm going to explain you how you can get involved. If you want, for example, to have your products uh, labeling guaranteed, if you want to jump on the blockchain to collect data across your supply chain or your farms, if you want to be insured in a different way in a decentralized manner we're gonna go through that as well together so this is it uh, without any further ado i'm gonna pass the word to francesco who's gonna drive you through what a blockchain is thanks so first i want to give a very high level overview of what blockchain is so you might be wondering why is it called blockchain and i always like to thinking about it and imagining yeah, we are maintaining a shell ledger with many pages of record in which each pages start with the summary of the previous page. So if you change the content of a page, you need to change the summary of all the successive uh, uh, pages. So in a blockchain, instead of pages, we have blocks. And instead of summaries, we have ashes, with, which are uniquely identifiers of data. And as I said, if you change one block, you have to change all the following ones and so on. Um, one of the property of blockchain is that everyone keeps a copy of it. So that's why it's called a distributed ledger technology, because the network is decentralized and everyone can um, audit and can uh, validate that the data are, uh, the, um, are valid. Um, so there's no a central authority which we have to trust, but uh, the trust is decentralized. Then the actual network is immutable. So once a block is added to the blockchain, it cannot be changed. As we said, we cannot change it. If we change a previous block, then we have to change also the actual hash. But then the previous block cannot be changed. You can only append new blocks. blocks. And finally, because of the decentralized nature, um, it's also very hard to tamper with the data. So we don't have to trust a centralized party, but everyone can verify the, the data is valid and no one can change the data. Uh, so you, you might think the blockchain is a very new technology, but actually it's been around for a, for a very long time. 
Um, there are many networks like BitTorrent and Tor Browser, which are peer-to-peer -peer, um, network. They've been around since 1980. And blockchain took this decentralized, this peer-to-peer -peer network to a new level by adding new security and other elements that made this technology so revolutionary. And yeah, the first implementation was in 2008 with Bitcoin um, and the releasing of the white paper with Satoshi Nakamoto. They give a model, a working model that will be used by many other blockchain today. So now that you understand high level what blockchain technology is, we still have to understand how does it actually work. And I will is main is made, I like to break it down in mainly four elements. They made up they're the most important column of what of a blockchain. So first we talk about the decentralized nature at the peer-to-peer -peer network. But then we also said that it has to be we have to find a way to um, be sure that no one can tamper with the data and make sure the the validity and the security of data and this is guaranteed thanks to the use of cryptography and there is apply so the bad actor cannot change data uh, another very important element then um, you can think it as a rule on how to agree what is the current state of the data so we said that there's many people and we need to agree on what the valid state of the data is. So the, this way of agreeing of what the valid data are, so the current state of the blockchain, and how who is going to add new data is called consensus algorithm. And I like to think more as a rule, so in uh, how to validate data and add new data to the blockchain. And finally, I think the last most important one is game theory. So you need a system on punishment and reward to ensure that the, um, that the person, the people that are part of the network um, want to, is on their interest to follow the rule. And instead of just having to follow the rule, everyone benefits by uh, securing the network and doing the best to have um, a, a secure and prosperous network. Finally, uh, as we said, it's a decentralized network. So um, if it's only five of us that uh, the use this network is not really decentralized as we only have five nodes. So one of the most important elements of blockchain is um, adoption. So I think one of the more adopted after Bitcoin is Ethereum today, which has around 1,000 nodes. And you might think that bringing up a blockchain is very, like after the explanation of all these elements, is very complex. But actually, uh, Ethereum offer a do-it-yourself uh, model in which everyone can um, have, use the Ethereum network and store data and write logic that is stored on the blockchain. So one of the revolutionary things that Ethereum introduced was smart contract. So smart contract are programs that are stored on a blockchain. So basically is you adding logic uh, instead of just data that can be executed when some conditions are met. So this basically uh, um, permits a lot of uh, new application use cases and uh, is a way to automate uh, execution of agreement or in general any business workflow. Uh, thanks to the smart contract and the, all the um, characteristics that we talk about uh, the blockchain, there are um, many use cases that are possible that we're going to talk about. But first, I wanted to uh, give a small summary of all the most important benefits uh, of blockchain in general. So we already talked about censorship resistance. So the fact that the network is centralized, we don't have to trust uh, uh, any third party that can change the data anytime. And we see uh, cases of 
uh, Facebook or Instagram server going down or changing the data or censoring people. This is not possible with blockchain. So the network uh, has to the to the side. So it has to come to majority. There's no uh, central party that you cannot control that will do uh, decision or will censor data. So the data itself is immutable and it's not going to change. Um, and we, all find, we also talk about the security of the network. The data itself is also, is also transparent. There are some way to actually uh, include privacy on blockchain by including data or just uh, of the data on the blockchain. And finally, thanks to smart contract, we can actually use this logic, which is the code, to actually disintermediate any third party and reduce all the cost and having actually the the um, the code do all the all the work that any third party will do so we're going to actually uh, dive deeper on this concept and as as we said we we can the code is stored on a blockchain it cannot be changed so we can finally trust that something is going to happen and all our the other business party are going to behave in the way that is uh, written on the blockchain. So the first use case that I want to talk about is payment and capital markets and finance. So blockchain, uh, like one of the first implementation of them is being cryptocurrencies, which um, are basically a set of data. You actually have transactions and there are a, tra a temper proof transaction log and they represent a network, a payment network with very fast clearing and settlement. So yeah, as we said, thanks to the code, we actually disintermediating banks and or any, yeah, any old style type of payment network. And we have a very way faster clearing and settlement. And plus we also, thanks to the transparency of the blockchain, we can actually verify data way faster and understand everything that is going on. Uh, yeah, another very important application and advantage, thanks to the transparency and the mutability, is uh, preventing money laundering and auditing in general. So uh, you can just to audit the an asset, some some data is there. You can just provide the digital proof that this is just um, mathematically uh, right that something is there. So it makes the process of auditing way, way faster and way more reliable. Another very important application is insurance. So we talk about smart contract and smart contracts are basically uh, perfect for this type of application in which you can encode all the logic of any insurance contract and any requirement that when are met are gonna release for example, funds or re uh, reimbursement or any uh, outcome or any type of insurance. So you can actually trust that um, your insurance is going to act the way it's supposed to act because it, it is encoded on the blockchain and it cannot be changed. Uh, another very important application that we can see uh, a lot today is on media and in general, any type of um, intellectual property. So thanks to blockchain, we can actually, uh, as I obviously said, disintermediate any third party. So any artist doesn't have to pay, for example, 80% of royalties to Spotify or to any other uh, music provider, uh, but it can actually leverage this technology to have a direct um, contact thanks to, to the code, to his fans and uh, one of the interesting concepts is today the very uh, hyped is NFTs. So NFTs are non-fungible token, which are basically a token which is unique, and I can prove the ownership on it of it, and uh, no one can uh, can counterfeit it. And thanks to it, we, we see a lot of application in the in the music, for example, with songs or any other type of digital. Uh, asset. Uh, finally, there are two applications more on the government side. 
so the identity space is definitely very fragmented and uh, yeah, the blockchain can offer a way to have a unified, interoperable and tamper-proof infrastructure in, in which you can actually have digital identities and thanks to the property of blockchain, you can you can easily verify without having to disclose too much data thanks to the encryption and have a unified interoperable identity system. And another very interesting application is definitely voting. So thanks to the logic of smart contract, we can um, make we can make voting much more clear, much more uh, fraud resistant. And finally, instead we can we can actually count uh, and audit very easily instead of having to count for days and ask for the recount. We, we can actually just count the votes in a few seconds. And now, finally, we get to the most important uh, part of today's lecture, which is IoT and supply chain, uh, most specifically um, food chains. So without further ado, I'm going to first start to explain how blockchain can revolutionize the, how, that, the importance uh, of blockchain the, in this space. So this space is very, that data is very important in this space to improve productivity and sustainability. And blockchain is definitely the most reliable, reliable way of storing data, which can provide us a source of truth and the guarantees trust and transparency among all parties and having a way to store the, the, this data safely can not only make a uh, food chain more efficient but also uh, prevent any type of this problem for example disease and uh, track the whole production step by step and identify um, all the different problems uh, in, in a very, very fast manner. Um, yeah, as we said, we can actually record every single step from the origin to the ship to the delivery of a product. And in this way, we can we can provide like food traceability, food safety, and guarantee the quality of food. So we can, thanks to this availability of data, uh, that everyone can trust and everyone can access. We can actually um, know way more about the product, so how it is produced. Um, so people, for example, care uh, maybe less about how it costs. They care more about uh, if it is organic or if, if when it was produced uh, was um, responsible environment friendly so people actually care more about how they're produced than, than the cost itself and the uh, blockchain provides us a way to actually uh, be able to um, provide this data in a reliable, reliable matter way uh, i think one of the um, main reason why blockchain uh, it's been adopted so much in the space where all the cases of illnesses that came out out of inefficiencies and um, problems on the food chains. So from the Center of Diseases Control and Prevention of the U USA, um, estimated there are around 48 million people in the, U in the US contract food-borne illnesses every year. And then one out of 10 people suffer from food poisoning worldwide. So pretty much, yeah, for 420,000 fatalities. Uh, there are many examples of, uh, I think one of the most important one, one of the most known one was Escarita Coli in 2006, in which people um, lost trust and stopped eating spinaches. I think restaurants stopped serving spinaches, spinach and they it took around two weeks to understand the problem itself and um, because then the data and the tracking of the, the the supply chain was was so fragmented so with blockchain it would have taken a few seconds and in would have saved lots of life and money and one of the most known 
project uh, that uses blockchain to track food chain and supply chain is IBM Food Trust. So IBM Food, food Trust is born in 2017 with the, the world 10 largest food uh, consumers uh, join all together. Uh, just to say some big names, they the, were the founders. We can we can talk about Walmart, Nestle, Dole, and then other big ones join later. So, what is the uh, proposition of IBM Food Trust? So, IBM Food Trust wants to be a solution built on the IBM blockchain um, to connect grow growers, wholesaler, processors, manufacturer, distributor, and retail, so that they can everyone can have um, a safe and a smart way to uh, um, access information and yeah to have an highly sustainable food ecosystem um yeah the first food trust is the first of its kind and in a, it allows transactional partners to assuredly and securely share information overall the collaboration in, enhanced a clearer and trustworthy universal food chain and uh, so the food across the world has become uh, available to consumer worldwide uh, regarded as location season or environment um yeah ibm uh, in general divides uh, the mo four most important benefits of ibm blockchain food trust dividing them by trust efficiency sustainability and food safe safety so yeah we talk about trust so the our blockchain uh, we can actually trust that the data are valid and uh, people all consumers or producer can make decision out of this da data they can trust other parties um, of what they're saying we talk about how we can increase efficiency so tracking um, every single step of the supply chain we can understand bottlenecks uh, we can make sure that um, things are not taking longer than it's supposed to be or not um, following the condition they are supposed to follow by understanding bottlenecks and increasing efficiency which has been a very important uh, subject lately with all the supply shock problem that we had with the 2020 uh, COVID pandemic. And we also can uh, enhance sustainability because we, thanks to the transparency of data, uh, we can actually make sure then um, the, produ the production of the, of the goods is sustainable and um, yeah, and then provide a way to the, to the actual consumer to, um, to be sure that the the production is, is be sustainable we are finally as we outline we can prevent and identify much quicker any uh, food safety any food uh, poisoning or any any illness uh, in time and prevent it yeah uh, as i said many important firms uh, corporates producers in this space joined the beginning so Walmart, Dole, Nestle. In 2020, there were around 300 suppliers and buyers on the network with around 6 million packed food products. In 2021, Carrefour, which is like one of the uh, giants retailer in this space, joined first just with like some pilots, uh, some pilots on trucking chicken and microgreens, um, but then uh, actually implementing for way more uh food today IBM food trust includes actually more than 500 organizations of which one of the biggest one is definitely walmart which is both one of the biggest giant in this space always at the forefront of innovation and yeah i want to just spend a few minutes uh, before passing the board to massimo about um how the role of walmart in this space and yeah how is driving forward um um, the revolution of the food chain. So first, uh, in Walmart founded the Walmart Food Safety Collaboration Center in Beijing um, in 2018. I think they spent around two, 
25 million uh, dollars in the last five years to study foodborne contamination and develop risk assessment models that can be used by any uh, producer. Finally, Walmart is actually been investing um, very strongly in food rate technology as blockchain to detect foodborne pathogens and monitor uh, contaminations. So as, as we said, Walmart is being one of the first adopter of IBM blockchain technology and uh, to use blockchain on the supply chain and food chain. Uh, they actually started through two pilot projects. So one, the porks in China, and another one, tracking ma mangoes in Americas. So pork in China is actually one of the biggest um, uh, products produced around, I think, 35% um, of the food production in China. And the way they carried it was very interesting. So they were using, they were tagging uh, each single pig. They were tracking everything with sensors and cameras uh, from the actual warehouse to when the actual product the meat was moved uh, on trucks by tracking temperature, uh, they were able to actually optimize um, um, the, the, the pork food chain from origin to, this, to, to um, delivery. Uh, so China is definitely one of the countries that wastes more on these kind of inefficiency, inefficiencies, and uh, this project was able to save them around 25% of the actual revenue. They were they were usually were going to be wasted on these inefficiencies. Another very inter interesting uh, pilot project was mangoes in America, in which uh, they were actually able there was the first time they actually used ibm blockchain and the project was very successful and they brought down the time to track a good from the um, uh, origin from around two weeks to 2.2 seconds and finally today walmart is actually used blockchain uh, very widely and tracks more than 500 food items um, from farm to shelf and I think I think I can I can leave the board to Massimo that's gonna talk about other use cases and interesting uh, application on the food chain. All right, thanks. Yeah, thanks for giving a good intro on how blockchain works and talking about blockchain in the food supply chain. Now, guys, uh, I'm gonna leave Francesco. I'm gonna see you at the end again for a conclusion, and we are going to talk about uh, bringing transparency to the food. Um, uh, to the supply chain of food effectively. So Francesco talked about how the blockchain effectively can be used to uh, create trust. The whole idea is that being decentralized, there is no central entity controlling the data. So you can build more trust in your consumers. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about here. So the first thing I'm going to drive you through is some more high level examples. Um, the first that I can discuss, I'm just going to move myself up here. Um, so the first one that I think we should discuss is labeling. So what does it mean to actually label a product? A lot of times we hear about organic, cruelty-free, sustainable, and it, it kind of sounds like a marketing technique. Is it really sustainable? Is it really cruelty-free, right? How do we actually know? And there is companies such as, for example, where food comes from or WFCF that confirm such labels, right? They get, they get on the ground, they do their checks, they run uh, some you know, basic, basic checks effectively and try to figure out if you, what you're claiming, it's true. And most of the time it may very well be, right? But of course, this is very inefficient. You don't want to have somebody with a big lens every time going and checking if you're labeling it's truthful or not. So blockchain comes in place here because blockchain-based reputations and standards for supply for suppliers can basically ensure the integrity of a marketing claim. So we can put existing certifications and auditing, we can record them on the blockchain, and then we can use the data that you provide on the blockchain to basically prove the claims. Um, this will effectively remove any false claim or misstates. Anybody who's trying to basically say they have a label that they don't have and therefore isolate their products from the supply chain. And if, a com if consumers then know that a company labeling it's backed by traceable, immutable, decentralized blockchain system, then of course, 
we will increase trust in those consumers. So labeling is a very relevant component of what you can do with blockchain to actually guarantee what you're talking about. And it's really simple. It's really relatively quick once we adopt blockchain in the supply chain of uh, the food industry. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to move myself again, um, is ethical production. So a lot of the times we hear about situations around the globe where production and food production, agriculture, farming, is not exactly ethical as it seems. We hear a lot about fair food and I think there's a lot of products around, I think there's some running around um, fair chocolate, for example, in South America, but is it really fair? Is it fair to the people that work there? So. And blockchain-based solutions have the potential to provide better and more numerous insights into human rights, for example. We can monitor factory working conditions. We can identify motive forms of slavery, for example. Um, we can identify child labor, employee exposure to toxins. So, you know, is the environment in which you work a safe environment? And we can also help farmers reveal what the fair price of the value they create in the market actually is, right? Um, and here I want to bring in an interesting example. So Fair Food, which I got down here on the right hand side, is a Dutch startup that has already connected a lot of actors in the coconut supply chain. So what they do, it's basically create a digital ID of the product that travels with the product itself. So all the products are assigned a unique token. So all the coconuts literally have a token assigned to them that travels on a digital journey parallel to the actual journey of the product. On the journey, the product collects information that is shared and used for claim and agreement verification, providing value to users along the chain, right? So as the product travels, we upload more and more data on the blockchain and it's published to everyone. And the details of the transactions, such as volume sold, the price paid, can be digitally communicated via text messages. And even if a farmer doesn't have a phone, um, there is still a text message informing the farmer about the amount of sold product and price that should be paid. So to get a much better idea of what their product is worth, and this helps track through the supply chain, it's something doesn't really work the way it should work, right? If you're selling a coconut as a farmer for 10 cents and it hits the market at $5, where somewhere in the chain, there is clearly somebody trying to basically uh, take um, take money out of it, make extra money that is really not fair. Uh, so food, fair food is really just trying to make uh, the whole game fair for everybody. They started working in Ethiopia and Colombia uh, on nutmeg products and in Indonesia as well. And they're definitely offering very interesting strategies to try to make the market a little bit more fair using the video blockchain. Um, next, I want to talk about agricultural insurance. So if you're familiar with insurance, it was usually a very simple type of insurance, um, which is the uh, indemnity-based insurance. So something happens, you go up to your insurance and you say, this happened, I would like to have um, some you know, a payout, I would like to have some money to cover uh, my expenses. Now, that's probably the worst kind of insurance because somebody needs to come around your farm uh, or check the supply chain, figure out what happened. You have to agree on how much money you're going to get, and you probably never get all the money you should get. So the best next step is index-based insurance, which is basically something like saying, if it rains a lot in your region and we all have access to um, rain data and weather data, then we can agree on how much insurance you should get paid, right? This is good, but it's not. Perfect. The best way to do this is actually record all this type of data on blockchain because at that point it's indisputable. Nobody can say, oh, but that day my system worked in a different way or, you know, the monitoring station is away from my farm. So it records a different level of water. If it rains a lot, you know, snow or hail ruins my crops, uh, you can argue, oh, but it wasn't on my farm or it was only on my farm and, and all sorts of arguments you can make. With a blockchain, you can basically guarantee that the data recorder is correct for your crops, for your farm, and you can guarantee payouts basically down to the penny. But not only that, Francesco talked about smart contracts, which is this idea of having a contract in between two parties that is automatically executed as soon as a condition becomes true. So what you can do with blockchain, you can feed, for example, weather data. And let's say you have an agreement with your insurance that says if you rain more, more than 50 millimeters a year, therefore ruining my crops, um, the smart contract is automatically kick, is going to kick in and give me a payout. I don't even need to reach out to the insurance. They, we both agreed we're going to use the blockchain system. We both know the data is there. Nobody can touch it. 
and therefore it's automated, right? So you can see the power of ensuring um, your farm and your crops and your supply chain using blockchain because the data is public, available to everybody, clear, undisputable, and immediate. And um, I'm going to leave some links at the at the end of the presentation. You guys can go check them out as, as uh, on specifically how to get insure with blockchain. Um, next up, we can talk about smart agriculture, of course. So storing data used for smart agriculture is a thing today already. A lot of people do it. A lot of people will store a lot of the data. We talked about weather. You can talk about crops, how the crops grow, the sun exposure, the humidity. There's so much data you can collect to improve the way you grow crops. The issue is where you store it. You, ob you ob sorry, obviously pretty much always store it on a centralized system. What you want to do is store in a decentralized system where nobody can modify the data, where nobody can um, basically harm your data. And with the blockchain, not only we can guarantee security out of the box, so you don't need to build an infrastructure to guarantee security, um, but we can obtain out of the box certifications and approvals. So imagine that every year somebody comes around to check your farm and make sure that you are using the tools you're using the, the way you meant to use them. Um, that you are applying local regulations and you are following local laws and being effectively a good farmer, when well, you no longer need to do that. Nobody has to come around and do this lengthy process. They can do it through the blockchain. And to bring you a couple of examples, uh, usual question is, well, but how do I do it, right? I'm driving my tractor from the 1980s across my farm. H how do I put data on this you know, virtual blockchain? Well, there is a company um, that is working exactly on this. And they develop something called a blocklet, which is here on the slides. You can see it's about the size of 10 cents. You drop that on your um, on your tractor, for example, and you can link it with a USB to any machines that you have around your farm. And I will start uploading data to the blockchain. And another really interesting example was um, the Taiwan farmland irrigation system. So in Taiwan, all the farmers irrigating fields, they're using smart sensors and uploading to the blockchain the amount of water being used for irrigation. And that is basically created an archive of the data collected that allows people to better interact with each other and optimize the amount of water being used. And of course, nobody can you know, modify that data. So we know it's truthful. And when somebody says, I need more water from my field, or I can spare some water for your field, then we guarantee that that is the case. Um, Right, so let's step to the next bit. So e-commerce, of course, we talked about trust. We have to talk about e-commerce. So when you buy something online, a lot of the time, it doesn't exactly turn out like what you expected it to be, right? We all bought something from Wish and then it came around three weeks later and it wasn't what we expected. So with blockchain, information security and traceability, we can guarantee the uniqueness of branding and uniqueness of a product, right? We can drastically reduce forging we can reduce copycats and remove copycats from the market. And moreover, blockchain provides payment methods with uh, near zero fees. That has been shown by cryptocurrencies in the last 10 years, for example. So a lot of cryptocurrencies will offer you basically no fees on the network. So you can buy and sell assets pretty much for free. Uh, I think Shopify also does something similar to this. Um, to give you some example, uh, there's a lot of companies that are already using these sort of process for uh, applying basically branding and uniqueness on the blockchain. And there is a whole market, the old farmer's market uh, in uh, the Hubei pro uh, province, province of China, where the whole market is effectively running on the blockchain. All the products are guaranteed for their uniqueness uh, on the blockchain. And the other thing that this does, of course, is that it... Um, makes it more accessible, makes e-commerce more accessible to people. Um, a lot of big brands will be able to run um, and sell their products on an e-commerce platform. That's just because they can afford it. They're large and they have enough money to set up all the infrastructure needed. Nowadays, I know you can do it with things like Shopify, which makes it a little bit cheaper, but imagine if we run everything in blockchain, we basically already have all the infrastructure that you need. You all have the security layer, you all have your transactions layer, the payment system, it's all already there, right? You don't need to do anything extra, which kind of reduce the barrier to entry to e-commerce for a lot of small farmers and a lot of smaller players in the supply chain. Um, all right. so. This is it for the high level points. Now I want to jump onto a few more interesting cases. So we're going to talk about some of the real life implementations of food chain, which is one of the most interesting parts of this module. So the first one I want to tell you about is 
yellow tuna tracking. So somebody one day decided to start tracking yellow tuna. So we're going to see why now. So Provenance is a tech company. They collaborated with an NGO called Humanity United and International Po Lion Foundation, which is another NGO. And they conducted a six months project in Indonesia to track and trace yellow uh, tailed tuna. So the project aimed to use a mobile application together with blockchain technology and smart tagging, which we're talk going to talk about in a second, to track and trace the origin and authenticity um, of the social sustainability certification. So when you're fishing tunas, you have to do it in a sustainable way. And there is a lot of issues with fishing and overfishing. And we want to track and make sure that where the tuna comes from is exactly where you're saying it comes from. And the way it's been fished is the way you should fish it. So the goal was to create a solid proof of compliance via a solution applicable throughout the supply chain. So in this case, the blockchain was used for sharing information across the stakeholders of the chain, including fishermen, factories, certifiers, and consumers. The blockchain was basically used for identification of both physical goods and validating the certifications. And the way it worked is really simple. The farmer would effectively register the fish by sending an SMS. So they fish the tuna, they send an SMS with some details about it, and they get an ID back. The ID is then physically attached to the fish, uh, the fish using a QR code or RFID tag, which you can see here on the slides. Um, the digital asset then moves to the supplier along with the catch. So there's all digital identities moving together with the fish now. And the transaction uh, the movements are stored on the blockchain. The identity of the fisherman is also saved, so we know who fished the tuna. And then tracking and tracing can be verified by exploring the blockchain with public software libraries, so anybody can do it. The unique ID in the form of an address on the blockchain is registered at the beginning of the chain and it propagates across the chain, allowing for uh, matching data across data silos. Effectively, you can go in and match different types of data as they travel through the blockchain. Having data stored on the blockchain also enables it to operate as a backend layer on top of a lot of existing systems. So a lot of uh, local um, government systems will be able to make use of this to validate and certify the fish being fished and the tuna being fished. So I think this is an extremely cool idea, an extremely successful pro um, project of the usage of blockchain in the food supply chain. Next up, we're going to talk about tracking olive oil. This is a lot more closer to the Italian. I see there is a lot of Italian people in the course. We are Italians as well. So this is going to be a lot closer to you. So the stakeholder of the supply chain are the olive farmers, the first processor of the olive at the mill, the packaging at the factory, the supplier, and the retailer. So the first step of the process where you effectively can get a lot of counterfeiting and adulteration is when the olives are transported to the mill to be turned into oil, right? So adulteration is often very difficult to detect. There is no unique method to spot all the types of contamination if you mix different types of olives uh, or if the amount of olives you should be providing in a certain state is not what it actually uh, should be. So Just Olive, which is a Italian company, came out with a traceability management system that aims at addressing these problems by collecting the information and manually entering some of the data um, by the producer. So Ambrosus is the blockchain company behind all this, and it's the firm that uh, founded Just Olive. And the way they do it is basically using a hardware in place. So they have some instrumentation in the mill where the oil is made, and they use this to test the phenolic compounds and alloic acids in the oil to try to see somebody tamper it with the olives when they go to the mill. And then they use RFID tags on everything that is shipped out of the mill, which could be bottles or barrels of oils, in order to track the product as it travels through the supply chain, because somebody could then take that oil, which is pure, maybe you're talking about extra virgin olive oil, and mix it with some other oils along the supply chain to make it cheaper. And then they could sell it as extra virgin olive oil, but really they're not. They've mixed it across the supply chain, and the, the producer itself, the farmer, has no idea that that happened, right? So by doing this, we can track uh, the whole supply chain, uh, the movement across the whole supply chain. And this was built on Ethereum, on the Ethereum blockchain, and the system enables basically quality assurance and a complete and rapid digital transformation from a simple process to a very digital process in the 21st century. Next up, I want to talk about tracing milk. So the dairy sector is one of the strictest ones when it comes to regulations, and there's a lot of focus on the origin of milk and derivatives, right? 
So Origin Trail is a company that develop a whole system that runs on a token econo economy. Token economy means they have a cryptocurrency effectively based on their whole platform that helps them structure the platform and the blockchain that collects the data. And it's really simple. They develop a blockchain uh, that is able to provide milk products origin down to each individual cow. This once again works with tagging. So each cow has a unique ID. When the cow is milked, um, the container that contains the milk is tagged with the cow number. And then when the milk is shipped, we're going to see a simple example, a simple, similar example with pork. Um, the um, truck that is carrying the milk, which is usually a very big container, is, is subject to very strict regulations in terms of cleaning and hygiene, also has a unique identifier. When they get to the checkpoints, so we get some veterinaries, for example, or some um, um, specialized people to check the milk before it hits the stores, then they validate that the idea of the cow and the idea of the truck are what they expect it to be. And all of this is recorded on the blockchain, so it's extremely public and traceable. So this means that anybody can publicly see the origin of milk, movement, pricing, dietary information, and it also makes it extremely simple for regulators to step in and uh, track the whole process and validate that the milk is at the state that local laws require. And last one I want to talk about is tracking pork. So TE Food is a blockchain firm that provides immutable and publisher data systems for the supply chain using a token system as well. Um, the way they implemented the whole system is really interesting. So the implementation was carried out via a mobile app, taking into account all the actors in the supply chain. So farmer, agents, the slaughterhouse, the uh, wholesalers, the food producers, and so on. Each animal, each pig is identified by a unique ID or a QR code, and it is stored on a blockchain. So the farmer uses a mobile app to store the ID of the pig on the blockchain. Then we assign an ID to the track that carries the pork to the slaughterhouse. At the slaughterhouse, somebody can use the QR code and the ID, and using the app, they can check on the blockchain the authenticity of where the pig comes from and how the pig traveled. After the meat is slaughtered, a unique ID and QR code is also assigned to the veterinary who confirmed that the meat is healthy and the meat can be sold. And then another ID is assigned to the truck, so we kind of repeat the same process. And when this gets to the store, then the store owner can use this to ID, use the blockchain and the app and confirm that the meat they received is the same meat that was approved and has traveled in the way it was meant to travel. And then finally, the user, the person who's going to buy the meat, they can use their mobile phone, scan a QR code, and get all the information about how the meat was sourced, how it was slaughtered, who checked it, when it was checked, what it contains, and so on. All of this virtually for free, because it's all on the blockchain, it's all public, and the infrastructure is all self-contained. All right, so let's take a look at some interesting Italian players in the game as well. Uh, I think there is many, many Italian companies that are actually venturing in the blockchain space. One of them, um, it's Food Chain. You can scar the QR code here, guys, to get some more information about them. So Food Chain is an Italian blockchain firm that helps trace the origin of products from the farm to the table. Effectively, what we talked about today, made in Italy, they use RFID and then NFC tags, basically tags, tagging of the products. They use photos, videos, text, and applications to help you um, track the products. Interesting one as well is wine blockchain. This is the same concept that apply to authenticity of wine. We want to make sure that the wine is authentic. And for example, DOCG and DOC labeling or even EGP labeling on different products um, are guaranteed, they're truthful, they're not fakes or you know, they're not um they're not con um they're not forgeries of Italian wines. And this was an initiative brought up from Agri Open Data, which is another tech company that owns the node of the blockchain where the data is stored. So you can scan the QR code if you want to read a lot more about them. My story is a similar thing, but it focuses a lot more on the process and any interesting information for the users. So everything we've seen so far was mostly about the supply chain. My story is effectively for the end user, so that the end user can go and read all the details about the product they are purchasing. And the last one, which I think is really cool, is Demeter. So Demeter um, aims at tracking the supply chain from the producer to the consumer. And the whole idea is creating a direct relationship in between you, the consumer, and the farmer in every corner of the world. So it's an international company. And the way to do this is by allowing users to rent a portion of land, which is called microland. So you can rent a portion of your land 
uh, all the information about the land is uploaded on the blockchain. The ownership, as Francesco mentioned, for example, for NFTs is undeniably yours. And then the platform operates using a DMT coin, which is their own cryptocurrency, which is an Ethereum based cryptocurrency to purchase some of the goods. And you can decide once you rented the land to effectively receive the food at your house. So I think it's a really cool concept. They mix together a couple of things of virtual land, uh, distance, um, land rental and uh, micro land on the blockchain, which is, I think, really interesting. Um, so this kind of concludes this paragraph on real life implementations. And last five minutes, I want to tell you a little bit about the limitations we have and how you can get involved. So I think the main limitation of the blockchain technology, uh, well, three of the main limitations are the fact that we need further research. We need to find out how to better obtain the data that we put on the blockchain and we need to make it less time consuming. So let's go through each one of these. So further research is required on the transacting party's motivation to provide genuine data, right? We can put data into blockchain. We can leverage the idea of the blockchain being uh, safe, decentralized, uncorruptible. But if the data is not good, then of course the whole thing falls apart and it doesn't work anymore. So we have to find a way to provide good data. And blockchain technologies benefit for farmers also may depend on the size of the farm. On the one hand, small farms could easily participate in blockchain-based insurance market. On the other hand, collecting and integrating on-farm data may be more convenient for larger farms that have more money to invest into this type of technology. So future research should try to anticipate which farms could benefit and which could lose from the introduction of blockchain-based solutions. Second, obtaining data uploaded to a blockchain can be very costly, which will be a barrier to the adoption of the blockchain technology. The setup of distributed ledgers themselves can, can be relatively cheap, but collecting data required for making the ledger useful can be quite expensive. We can talk about the DNA of livestock animals, we can talk about sensors in your farm, we can talk about you know, all the tax that I talked about earlier. It's not something relatively cheap. So sampling, for example, can reduce the cost, but it requires that the population of the products uh, for the data collected is large enough. So this means that the average cost of data collection is lower for larger farms, once again, than for smaller ones, which raises the concern of increasing the income discrepancy. So effectively, once again, bigger farm may benefit, smaller farms may actually lose on this. And lastly, blockchain doesn't directly seamlessly integrate with existing legacy systems. Uh, you know, this is very futuristic, you may say, and I think you're right. There is a lot of things up there that's relying on the 80s, 70s, 60s technologies and uh, in which blockchain may be very hard to integrate and extremely time consuming. So I think these are the three main challenges to keep in mind when we enter the space. And lastly, before we leave you today, I want to tell you about how you can be involved. So we're going to put these links as well in the Canva course and the Canva page, so you can go and check them out yourself. I think what's mostly relevant for somebody who wants to join this space, first of all, is to be on chain and understand how you can do it in uh, your industry. So foodchain.it is the Italian company that helps farmers and producers get on the blockchain. So definitely go and check them out. Next, I think being traceable, it's something really good for ensuring um, increasing trust in your consumers. So TE Food is the company to help track uh, port across the globe. Uh, we got IBM Food Trust as well. So, you know, being traceable is definitely quite relevant. Connects to be on chain, of course, but it's more specific. Be trustworthy. So Demeter, uh, which is the company I talked about, rents land, also have a certification program that helps you basically certify if you are EGP, if you are a DOCG, if you are a DOC or any other certification you may have without having to go through all the fuss of getting people in your land and documentation and bureaucracy, you can all do it on chain, automated. You don't really have to worry about it apart from the initial setup. Be ethical. Very important here. I think you can go and check out Fair Food and how to use blockchain to make sure that what you do on your farm is ethical. There is a lot of talk about immigration, immigrant labor, labor in farms around the world. So especially, you know, if you're hiring somebody um, of a different background uh, or if you're worried about, you know, if you, if you think people and your, your consumers are worried about the um, how ethical your production is, then definitely go and check out Fair Food. And lastly, if you have an insurance and most people do, you should probably read a little bit more about how insurance and blockchain works, because if you can make it work with your farm and your supply chain, it's basically money guaranteed down to the penny 
because it's so automated, it's so clear out in the open. And a lot of times you go to an insurance that will try to play out and say, oh, but you know, that particular aspect wasn't the way respected and they're gonna give you less money than what you actually should uh, receive. So definitely go and check out how to be insured on the blockchain. So I think this is it guys for today. I'm gonna switch back to a view when you can see both of us. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, don't forget to check out the complete resources on the course page. If you have any question, our email address is on screen. And for Jessica, anything you want to say in our last minute uh, before we close? No, that's good. Thanks for the for listening and have a good day. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Bye.